Hey, it's Kirk here for Secret Nature. Now, uh, the dog here really wanted to be on today's video and has been trying to get in my lap ever since I started recording, so I guess you're in the video. Congratulations. Today we're talking about Half-Life, so let's get to it. So we're back to our familiar M&Ms, only this time these M&Ms aren't going to be individual particles within atoms. These M&Ms, and I have a different color for that reason, are actually representing uh, individual atoms. In this case, we're going to pretend like it is uranium-235. All right, so after some period of time, some of these particles are under, going to undergo uh, nuclear decay, and it will look like this. As you can see, that one in the middle has turned blue to symbolize that it has actually decayed into something else. That one in the blue is now thorium. It no longer has enough uh, particles within it to be uranium. It has actually turned into thorium, which is kind of cool. Now that takes a long time for that to happen with uranium. Now let's just watch the process unfold here much faster than it would in nature. Okay, let's stop right there because something has happened. I started with 20 M&Ms of uranium and now I have uh, 10 M&Ms of uranium, which are the orange ones, and 10 M&Ms of thorium, which are the blue ones. I've lost half of my radioactive, uh, in this case, uh, let's say it's U-235, uranium-235. How long did that take? Well, only a couple seconds on the video, but in reality, to lose half of your sample would take 700 million years. So that's called the half-life. The half-life is how long it takes for half of your sample uh, to be transformed into something else. It doesn't mean that uh, these remaining ones are not radioactive. They are still radioactive. If this was my whole sample of, say, rock of some kind, uh, this would still be radioactive, but it's going to be not as radioactive uh, as it was when it started. If this was, instead of uh, U-235, if this was U-238, uranium-238, that process would take a lot longer. The half-life of uh, U-238 is 4.5 billion years. So again, half-life is not how long it takes for all the sample to disappear, only for half of it to disappear and uh, be transformed into something else. A cool example of this, uh, because we know that uh, U-238 has a half-life of 4.5 billion years, and we can look at how much uh, U-235 there is in the planet, we know that the planet had initially equal amounts of those two elements. And now, when I look at it, the U-238, which has a longer half-life, accounts for 99.3% of all the uranium found on Earth, uh, whereas only a very small fraction of that is actually U-235. Uh, because it has a shorter half-life, more of it has decayed away as compared to the much longer-lived U-238. So half-life is important. It does tell us how long something will be around. There are some elements that would do decay very quickly, matter of seconds, uh, until they're essentially gone. Uh, radon is a good example of that. It has a very short half-life. Uh, I believe it's about eight minutes until it is completely gone. If you were to uh, have a sample come into your house, now the reason it's a problem is that more radon keeps on coming into your house over and over. Um, but some things have a very short half-life and some things have a very long half-life. So knowing that helps us figure out, you know, s somewhat how dangerous some of these things are in terms of how long they're going to be around in our environment. Thanks for watching. You can click the Secret Nature button in the middle there to subscribe to this channel and receive more content. You can also click on one of the playlists on the left or right for more from Secret Nature. Thanks for liking, commenting, and subscribing.